and click go live right now. And I'll give us a couple seconds for the latency to catch up so that I can be absolutely sure that you are hearing me and then we will launch right into it. I'm just, I'm, I haven't figured out a good normal way to fill this like pre-roll gap yet. Maybe I just need a video, like an intro video that plays there. Maybe I need like a bumper or something. But anyway, regardless of that, hey there, welcome back to Next Level Nonprofit Video. This is a channel where I basically am saving you time, cash, and sanity while we're all kind of chasing that next level in our video. My name is Josh Hughes. I run a company called Epic Video and this channel is a way that we give out free resources trainings, all that kind of thing. All this week, we've been talking about live streaming. Live streaming has suddenly become particularly relevant to our culture, with us all being locked away in our homes and not really knowing what uh, what happens next and making sure we can still stay in contact, especially for cause-based organizations like you and me, you know, nonprofits, small businesses, um, churches, you know, people like that, houses of worship, however you want to say it. All of us have something in common, and that's that we want to stay in touch with our tribe but we can't go to places where our tribe is. And so in place of those gatherings, what we've ended up with is the opportunity to figure out live streaming and how to use it well and get all of our digital communications kind of up to par and reach out to those tribes. So that's basically what this whole week has been about. It's been about the gear we use for live streaming, the techniques we use to live stream, all those kind of things. And it culminates in this. Today, I'm going to literally give you some shopping lists of here's how you can go live. Now, you don't have to use my specific recommendations, but these are combinations of gear that will work at various price points for people with different use cases to try and give you a starting point so that you can get into the field of live streaming without having to feel so overwhelmed by all the options and without having to worry about your budget because I've got them at different budget levels and all those kinds of things. And don't worry if you're not super technically inclined, these are still going to work great for you. If you're with me live right now, welcome. So excited to have you. Feel free to drop a hi in the comments or something like that. And uh, I will be taking questions throughout the live stream. So uh, every now and then I will pause, check those comments, and see if you've got any questions that I can answer or clarify, and then I'll keep moving forward. Um, let's start with just a quick overview of how the live streaming system... Actually, I guess let's start by acknowledging that I look drastically different today than I have any of the other four days this week. I've totally changed the look and, fe the look and feel of this setup. And the reason for that is to show you what you can accomplish without any fancy equipment. If you've watched my past live streams this week, then you've seen sort of a well-curated backdrop set thing with like camera lenses and expensive pieces of equipment and it's all thematic and you can see my laptop and it all looks kind of good and all that kind of a thing. But what if you don't have extra equipment? What if all your equipment is being used in the live stream? What if you just don't have a lot of money anyway? Like a lot of gamers who are, you know, in college or just post-college, those sorts of situations don't have a lot of excess money to spend on their backdrop. So I wanted to give you an idea of something I could make with just random stuff from around my house. So I've got here hats, which some people have. You don't have to use hats. You can use greeting cards or string lights or whatever you want. And then I've just pointed some cheap... This is a like a cheap LED light. This is called the Ap uh, Aperture MC, and it's $90. There are $20 knockoffs of it. I just happen to have this one because it can be controlled over Bluetooth and I run a video company so I can get a little indulgent on those. But that's what both of these lights here are, these little LED lights. And you can absolutely get the same results from pretty much any small LED light panel. Uh, newer sells them, other people. So that that's literally my whole backdrop. That's all I did. I put those things up and then we were good to go. I also gave you a foreground element here, which is just the computer monitor that I'm about to look at when I take you on our shopping journey, um, just so that you could see a little bit of depth in the scene. And I left the microphone visible for the same reason, so that you can see there's like a foreground here, then there's me in the midground as the subject. It's all about me today. And then in the background, I have, you know, just some, some other various elements to put a little color there. And I'm just checking how it looks on my phone. And yeah, I think it looks pretty good. It looks professional, it looks well put together. It took me about a minute and a half, and it was super easy to do especially if you use one of the options that involves some autofocus, this is a really easy set to make because you don't even have to focus a camera lens or anything. You just, wherever you move, you're gonna stay in focus and look good. So that's why this is happening. 
Now let's move into the detail. Actually, let me take a second and just check if anyone said hi. Oh, nobody said hi. I feel so lonely. That's okay. I, I hope that you are enjoying your quarantine, and if your social distancing means that you don't want to touch your keyboard either, I totally understand. We can get to that in the future, right? Baby steps with this new relationship we've got. So let's take an overview of a live streaming system as a whole. In order to go live, you need five key pieces. You need inputs, which are like the camera, the microphone, the lights, things that make it so that the source in the room suddenly becomes a video. You need a switcher, which decides which of those inputs we're going to see or hear at any given time. You need an encoder, which packages that finished video up and sends it to the internet. You need a distribution platform, like Facebook or YouTube, to send that video to other people. And then you have some endpoints, those are your viewers. So all of those pieces put together makes up a live stream. Um, an example is what we're doing right now. I have three inputs in my room. I've got a light, one camera, and this microphone. Those, those inputs all go to my laptop, which is running a software switcher called OBS, and we talked a lot about that on Tuesday. They get there using a capture card, which we also covered on Tuesday. OBS has an encoder built into it, and that encoder packages the video and sends it to YouTube using a stream key. Once it gets to YouTube, it distributes to my endpoint, you, and that's all there is to it. So it doesn't need to feel scary, there's just those five chunks. And no matter how you live stream or what equipment you use, it will all break down to those five steps in the puzzle. Now before we dive into the actual shopping cart and here's what I think you should buy, I just want to point out I'm not sponsored by any of these products. I don't know that I even need to make that qualification. I have like 13 subscribers and I love all 13 of you, but you are not a big enough mass for me to appeal to brands on the level that sponsorships would require. And that's fine with me. I probably won't ever take sponsorships on this channel. The whole point here is to give out free advice and break down what my company does so that you don't need to spend money on people like me. But I did want to clarify that nobody paid me money to say their products were good here. These are all my own opinions. I've done all my own research, used all these products, well, most of them in like my, my own actual experience with my company. And that's how I got to my conclusions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the shopping cart for people who are streaming from home. So there are a bunch of different reasons to live stream from your house. I mean, right now you can't leave, but even non quarantine notwithstanding, there are lots of reasons you might stream from your house. You might be a gamer. You might be a musician who wants to play, you know, play out some songs that you haven't fully finished yet or even show off some of your solo numbers. You might be doing a sort of talking headpiece like I'm doing, so this is sort of an educational value. So there are lots of reasons to go live from your house, and if you're doing that, you can usually get away with spending a lot less money than like a permanent installation would be. You don't need to, and certainly if you have the resources to invest, you can get really high quality things. But you can get decent, acceptable quality without going totally broke. So here, let me pull up my second monitor here for you, bam. And we're gonna take a look at my shopping list for home streamers. So this is a single person on camera sort of stream. And we're going to begin by me then going back to my notes so that I know what I'm about to show you. Okay, so we're gonna start with the camera. This is the Razer Kayo webcam. It's really unique in that it's got this light built into the front of it. It can clamp onto anything and it has a mount on the back. You can see in this picture, there's a mount on the back here where you can attach it to a tripod. So it's very versatile in terms of your mounting options. It's powered over USB, which means that you don't need an external power supply or anything for it. It's kind of sleek looking. It's $100, which in terms of cameras, if you've ever actually looked at cameras, that's pretty affordable. The difference between this and something like this webcam, besides the light being built in, is that Razer is a company that is aimed at gamers. So they are also aimed at streamers because gaming is one of the uh, prolific live stream sources. So their products are really built for that live stream, whereas companies like Logitech are aimed at businesses. So they are really meant for like conference calls where the quality is less important. Um, but anyway, you will you could get good results with this Logitech webcam. I just am pretty confident you'll get good results with this Kayo. So that's the camera that I suggest you use. Now, you'll also need to capture some sound, and we do not want to use the built-in microphone on this camera, or any camera, to get our sound. So for that, I recommend the Blue Yeti USB microphone. And the thing that's nice about this is just like the camera, it's uh, USB powered. So you plug it into a computer, and that's all you have to worry about. It also has a headphone jack right on the back of it, so you can plug your headphones into the microphone, 
and when you're not using them, just set them down on the table, but they're not getting tangled behind your computer or torn up or, or you know, wrapped in circles and spaghetti and all that nonsense. Um, headphones really bother me, if you can't tell. So that's a really big benefit of this microphone. It's also what they call a large diaphragm microphone, which just basically means this bit at the top of it up here is gigantic. And because it's gigantic, it's going to pick up sound a lot better than a small diaphragm microphone would. Now, this is not a deep dive into the technicalities of microphones, but basically, for the human voice, when you're up close, you want a nice big microphone element like this. So I recommend this microphone. It's $130, which brings our total so far to $230. Now, the camera has a light built into it, but you also want to consider putting some kind of light behind you. If we come back to our full full screen view here, what I've done on the outside of my head is you can see I've created some rim light, and that rim light separates me from the background. Now, without it, it's not that it would look bad, but especially with these dark colors up above me, it would become hard to separate where I am from where the background is. You want to keep your subject separate. So like if I turn off my rim lights, and then I'll turn off my backlight here too, I'll take that away. Now look at the top, the back uh, edge of my head, the back of my head is ridiculous. Anyway, uh, that's like six years old now, isn't it? Dang. Anyway, you can see now the difference and how I'm not as separate from the room that is behind me as when I take this light and pop it there, turn on a rim light, and now all of a sudden I stand out against that background. And to do that, we don't want to go broke at home. So I'm suggesting we use something like this. Uh, oh, I should put it on screen, shouldn't I? Something like this. This is a Craftsman work light, basically, like for your garage. It gets continuous power because you plug it into the wall, so you never need to worry about your batteries running out or anything crazy like that. It's got this mounting bracket on the back of it that you can screw into a wall, or you can stand it up on its own, or you can hang it from something. So you have all these different options for where to put it, and it's only 20 bucks. So take one of those, set it behind you on the floor, shoot it upwards at an angle, and it will effectively rim light you. You can get three of these if you want and experiment with just how much light you can add to the set. You could do something like, I mean, this light is white right here. You could do that with any work light like this. It doesn't have to be one of the little LED panels. So that brings our total so far from 230 up to 250 to approximately 300 if you wanted to get three or four of these. That's $300, and we've got all the tools for our inputs. Now, we also need to talk about our switcher, right? All these things connect to something. They need to get switched, they need to get encoded, and we need to distribute them. Luckily, you can do all that stuff for free. You can switch them with a software called OBS, which I'm using right now, and it looks real space agey because it's like the middle of it is previewing the scene, so you're seeing OBS in OBS. Here, this will make it look a little less wacky. If I just bring this list down here and cover up the center part. This is OBS. It's a switcher. It's open source and free, so you can just install it and go. It's very easy to use. And then uh, OBS has an encoder built into it, so you don't need to worry about encoding because OBS takes care of that. And YouTube, which is my current distribution platform, and many others are free. So all of those parts of the, the puzzle become free, and they're very easy to do. So that's pretty dang convenient. So let's come back to our distribution platforms for a second. We've picked a switcher and an encoder. We're going to use OBS, which is free. We spent $300 on equipment. Now, how do we choose the right distribution platform? Because it's one thing to just have your live stream out there, and it's another thing entirely to have it go to the right place to reach your tribe. We talked yesterday during our distribution platforms talk, which was regrettably abbreviated, because there was a thunderstorm and my internet kept going out, so I sort of rushed through everything to make sure I didn't lose uh, connection for the live stream. We talked yesterday about which platform is right for which use case. So if you want a more detailed understanding of all the platforms, I really think it would be good for you to just go watch that video, but I will give you a quick overview of some of those use cases we've talked about today, right? Musicians, talking head educational channels, and gamers. The educational channels, always need to be on YouTube. YouTube is almost more used than Google when people have a question about something, when they want to learn, how do I change the oil in my car? Or when they think, oh, my dishwasher's making a weird noise. People go to YouTube to learn things because it's so much easier to learn for most people over video than it is by reading like a blog post or something like that. Because of that, 
if you're doing educational content like I'm doing, or if you're doing a variety of mixed up content, or uh, like a variety streamer is a is an actual category where like maybe you're doing music or games or whatever, but it keeps rotating. Those people should end up on YouTube. YouTube is the right platform. They have really great tools for interacting with your tribe. They'll allow people who want to to support you financially. They give you great analytics so you can watch your reach and see how your stream is performing in terms of where it goes and who it goes to. Those are all great reasons to use YouTube. If you are a nonprofit or a business that's trying to connect with your tribe and update them, basically to reach out to already bought in insiders, then you should be connecting to Facebook. Facebook is the place where people go to interact on social media. It's the best platform because most of your target audience are already there. And especially for nonprofits who are providing these kinds of updates or fundraisers, you especially want to reach your tribe where they are now. YouTube is great for expanded reach, like discovery. YouTube has an algorithm that basically understands the users better than the users understand themselves. So it will serve your video up to someone who doesn't even know they want to watch it yet. But Facebook is really good at notifying your followers who will, like, if you're, if you're a nonprofit and you have that bought-in tribe of, like, 150 people who volunteer with you, donate to you, whatever, and they just care about everything you do, YouTube's notifications don't get delivered all at the same time. So they may not all hear about it at the same time, even if you schedule your live stream in advance. But on Facebook, they are much more likely to see that because Facebook tracks where people engage. So Facebook is a great place to interact with people, to poll or survey or, you know, even fundraise a little bit, although you may need to send them off Facebook for the actual donations, Facebook is the right platform. If you're doing quick updates from like out in the field, which of course we can't do right now because of quarantine, then you really should just take your phone and go live stream uh, like on Instagram. You know, oh, hey, I'm here at the place doing the thing and th this is what we're doing. That's, that's the Instagram kind of stream. What about gamers? Gamers, you probably already know this, but Twitch is the right platform for you. Twitch is a platform built for gamers to live stream as a career. It has great tools for uh, your, your gaming tribe to interact with each other as well as with you. It gives you great analytics to see how your games are performing, specifically tailored towards what's the reach of a certain game. You know, uh, how is this going to work for me versus other things? It gives you great predictive analysis. Um, it has great tools for payment plans basically for people to support you financially so that's where twitch excels twitch looks very visually overwhelming the design is not clean or minimalist youtube and facebook have a pretty clean design twitch will overwhelm older audiences and twitch will overwhelm non-tech savvy audiences which is a big argument against it for the moment for really any category other than gaming where the main appeal is to technically savvy people so that's where those three distribution platforms fall for those at-home streams. And what if you want to take this to the next level? Uh, let me make sure that we're, we're looking at the right thing here. I keep paging off of my... I have OBS here to monitor what I look like, but I also have my notes here so that I can make sure I tell you accurate information, and I keep having to swap between them. We've now covered the at-home idea, but I'm going to take it to the next level and add in that multi-camera setup. So let's say you want something more exciting than just a single camera angle. Well, you're going to need more than one camera to start with. You're going to need some way to switch them and capture cards and all those things. Um, and you're going to need to figure out where the best place to distribute a more polished live stream would be. So here are the ways I would tweak this build for that category. So we spent $300 to get started. That's our base budget level. Um, one of the ways we can upgrade this is we can grab some guys like this. These are uh, camcorders with some pretty decent zoom on them. They have autofocus, and they have a clean HDMI out, which we talked about on Monday in our inputs live stream and how that's important. So they meet all of our prerequisites. They have a big, long battery life, but you can also plug them into the wall. And they're $200 each, well, $220 each. So let's say we get two of those. So you can interview someone or you can have one at the front and one on the side or something like that. So we've got two of these cameras. That's about $450. So we start there. Now, if we want more than one talent, like an interview, then we're also going to need to use multiple microphones. And the Blue Yeti is good. And if you have just two people, then it might be worth it to just get a second Blue Yeti. But at this point, you're going to start running out of USB ports. 
Because remember, your camera needs to go through a capture card. So if we're using an external camera like that rather than a webcam, then we need a capture card like this one. This is the Elgato HD60S. It's the one we talked about on Tuesday. And they're, well, let me just pull them up and show you what they cost. I should have done this earlier. The Elgato HD60S is, drum roll please, $180. So that's another adding with the cameras, right? We're looking at another $180 twice. So now we've already jumped just to get to multiple external cameras. We've gone from $300 to 320 plus 450. So we're already up to about $800. Um, but on the bright side, we're going to get much higher quality from these sources, if ever, even if everything else stayed the same. Now, because we've got these two things using USB ports, we may not want to use USB microphone sources, or at least not a bunch of microphones that all plug into our USB. So this is where an external recording solution comes in. This is the Behringer XR12, and it is a little teeny like audio mixer that has a function in it called Auto Mix. So you set it up once, and it manages the levels of all your microphones for you. I'm actually using one right now, although you can't tell it's managing the levels because I only have one microphone. I own it for bigger productions. So using this, you uh, this is another $400, so we're up to $1,200 now. So you can see we're getting to pricier territory, but that's what I said. This is the pricier option to get higher quality. Um, using this, you'll be able to connect one USB port, which is right there in the center. Let's see if there's a better photo of it. I bet there won't be. That's okay. We're going to move on with our lives and zoom in this way. So you can see right in the middle here, there is a USB port. It's like right up there. There. Oh, 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 right there. It's really hard to look at this because it's mirrored, so it's hard for me to use. Anyway, so one USB port plugs into your computer, and then you can get as many microphones as you want plugged into it and manage all their different sounds. So that's a really great way to, it doesn't just take you to two and then you need to buy something new at three. This will work for anything up to 12 microphones. A great microphone to start with is this guy, the $100 Shure SM58. This is the audio industry's like well-tested, tried and true, like good old boy microphone. These things, you can hammer a nail in with this microphone and you still won't break it. So these are $100 each. We get two of them, we're at 200. We add that mixer for another 400. And we add that to our original $1,200. Now we're talking about $2,000. So for $2,000, you can be streaming with high quality video um, in, you know, with really good audio from all of your different sources. And you can always consider spending a little bit extra, maybe $30 or $45 to get better cables or, you know, cleaner looking pieces or anything like that. But that's what it takes to get started. So we're talking about $2,000 to get to the next level. Now that multi-camera stream setup may not be super useful for gamers or for talking head educators, but where it is useful is for nonprofits who want to do live testimonials. Let's say you want to have someone come on and talk about the impact that your organization has had on their organization, like a soup kitchen's impact on a homeless union or something like that. Homeless people don't have unions. What am I talking about? A shelter, a homeless shelter. Um, although it would be great if they could unionize. I mean, I don't have anything against that. Um, why am I still talking about this? So that's a great application. The uh, Another place where that would work really well is for churches. If you're a smaller church, you know, less than 100 people, and you're trying to broadcast your services for your insiders who can't make it because they're sick or quarantined or whatever, something like this is a great way to get started in the world of live broadcast. Now, there are some things to consider as a church where you may want to get some better quality audio than just like four microphones will give you. Um, like taking a whole band and streaming it is a very different animal than just streaming voices. So that's something that you may need to dive a little bit deeper into, but the foundation of it is going to be the same. These cameras will work well for you. This mixer will work well for you. The capture cards will work well for you. So those are all great ways to stream. And we've stayed in the box, right? We're still using our laptop. We didn't have to buy an external switcher. We haven't had to purchase a hardware encoder, any of those things. So those are really good tools. Something else that you can do to take yourself to the next level is we can upgrade our lighting. Now, the lighting world is really expensive when you're looking at video lights. But these guys, for about $400 each, th this is the light that I'm using right now to light my face, is this GL200. 
Um, it's LED, so it stays fairly cool. It's got a fan in it, so it's a little bit noisy, but, I mean, you can't hear it right now, can you? So that's nice. Um, it has a nice, gigantic power cable that'll run the whole way back to a wall no matter how far away it is, so that's really convenient. And they have an industry standard slot on the front here where you can drop in. Let me make sure that we're looking at my screen share. Okay, we are. I just had a moment of, like, life-threatening indecision and, and self-doubt. But I'm back. I've recovered. That's good. Um, so these lights have that industry standard mount on the front, which means that you can buy basically any softbox. So you can get some kind of off-brand, something like this, to diffuse the light. Uh, actually, this one's on-brand. So this is $90 for the brand name version. But then there are some cheaper options, like this guy is $150. Where is the? There we go. So like this one. This is $35, and it will do basically the same thing. And down here is another one for $30. So, you know, between $30 and $90, and you get some pretty good options for light diffusion. Playing with lighting is another really in-depth topic that maybe I'll give its own stream to sometime in the future. If that's something you'd be interested in, feel free to drop a comment and let me know. Let's, let's talk to each other. Let's be friends. Let's be friends. Why can't we be friends? So we've talked about lighting. If you want to go, like, the whole way up to the best of the best, what you're looking for is one of these. The Aperture 120D uh, Light Storm. And these guys are really powerful. They, they uh, have an external power supply, so they don't need a fan, so they don't make very much noise. They're, they're great. I love these lights. I don't own any of them because they're expensive, but I love them. And if I were made of money, I would own them. So that's where you can, do to, that's where you can go to take your lighting up to the next level as well. Uh, let me pause here and just check, are there any questions? Because I would hate to walk all over people's questions and not check on them. Doot, doot, doot. Pulling up the YouTubes. No, it doesn't look like we do have any questions. So I'll keep going. If you have questions, as a reminder, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will gladly address them. Um, actually, it also looks like perhaps the stream's a little bit behind me. Maybe I'm not giving enough time for questions. So what I'm going to do is take a bracing shot of caffeine. It's a, it's a Coke, not sponsored. And then when we've given this a few more seconds, then I will, I will move on. Now that's good stuff. Still looking down here. I'm still not seeing any uh, comments down here, so that's nice. I'm going to choose, as I have all week, to believe that that means I'm explaining things with the utmost level of clarity and that you have zero questions. If that's not the case, feel free to drop them. I will come back for more questions as we move on. The uh, Let me actually just pull you back here to my face, because at this point, at this point, I think we're just we're just talking. We've looked at two different ways to get into the live streaming field, right? That $300 shopping list will get you started. And then we've looked at a bunch of different ways to grow from there. So we've looked at the actual equipment. What about some best practices? For the best value out of your live stream, you want to use a hybrid camera. Let me show you what I mean. So if we jump back up here to our products and we look for something like the Canon 80D. Let's see how much that actually costs. So here's a Canon 80D. It's about $1,000. That's a lot of money to spend on a camera, but it has a clean HDMI out, and you can use it for really high quality pre-made material. So you can get photography out of this camera. You can use it to shoot really nice videos that are pre-made ones, like things you might send out to fundraise or videos that you could use to highlight an event that's happening or just all sorts of stuff. So you get great video out of it, plus you get the live streaming camera. So where something like that Razer webcam is only $100, you can only use it as a webcam. So you can only use it for live streams. When you get up to something like this, you're now in the neighborhood of really high quality video. Now the camcorders we talked about, the $200 Canon Vixias, they will take video, but camcorder video looks different than cinema video. You've seen like, promo videos that looked good, and then you've seen ones that looked amazing. The difference between those is that the really nice ones are all shot on hybrid cameras like this, or better materials that are, you know, up in the $5,000 per camera range. But we're not going to talk about actual cinema line cameras for this conversation. For most of us, they're a little out of reach. 
So, um, so a hybrid camera like this is a great way to further your abilities. Another option that you can do to basically think best practices is with that camera, when, when you're looking at lenses, it's best to pair a camera like this one, the ADD, with a 35 millimeter lens. And I happen to know of a great 35 millimeter lens option. Right here is a $400 35 millimeter lens. It has a lot of qualifiers on the title, and I'm not gonna dive into what they all mean, but it's $400 and it looks amazing. You've actually been looking through this lens all week. Today you're looking through an 85 millimeter lens because I switched up the set. But all of my past live streams this week, those wide angle ones have been shot through this lens. So you know the colors look good, you know that it's really crisp and in focus, um, all, those, all those details. The other lenses, so there are lots of lenses available, which is why I brought this up, right? The reason that 35 millimeter is my favorite for live broadcast is that it's wide enough to see most of the room without that fisheye effect. It's also wide enough to get two people in front of. So if you only have one camera, but you want more than one person to be in the live stream, sorry, it's a wide enough camera that you can, or a wide enough lens that you can center the camera between both of you and still see both sides. So that's really helpful as far as, you know, saving yourself time and effort and money in the long run. You're spending $400 on the lens now, but you don't need to buy a whole second camera. So that's nice. The camcorders we talked about, they'll zoom out really wide and they'll zoom in really tight, but they will not get as bright as this lens. And that's because of the aperture. Now, again, I'm not going to go too in depth into um, like the mechanics of a camera lens, but basically this lens lets in a lot more light than most camera lenses do. And that's a big win because we're trying to stay on the cheaper end of buying cameras, right? Even that ADD at $1,000, ADD, like distractible, like I just got, um, even that Canon ADD at $1,000 is still not in the like upper echelon of cameras. It's like a middle of the road camera. So the more light that we can capture, the better our pictures are going to look. So that's the lens side of things. The other thing you could do is you could use a zoom lens like those camcorders have. And if you're doing that, a 24 to 70 millimeter lens is usually a good place to start. But you can see that these zoom lenses are even more expensive. They're up in the like thousand or fifteen hundred dollar range. And that's why in general, I would recommend sticking with that 35 millimeter Rokinon lens. Uh, forgot to put the brand in there. And again, I'm not sponsored by any of these people. They're just, I've used a lot of equipment and I've made a lot of buying mistakes. We'll talk more about those next week and, um, and kind of come to some strong opinions and conclusions. So that's the, the thing on there. Now there's also, we could talk about the lowest cost barrier, right? For $0, you can go live with this. You can go live with this too. And if I put it over here, it won't even be blocking any of the stuff that's on screen. You can go live with just your phone and you can get great results and you can engage your tribe. People are very forgiving of video quality as long as the audio quality is decent. So you do need to be concerned about, will they hear me all right? But to take just your phone and pick up a lav mic, let me show you, let me show you something amazing. Sony lav mic. Lav mic, uh, by the way, or lavalier is the kind of microphone that clips to your collar. So if I take you up here, we're looking at a $20 Sony lav microphone that I have used in the past and sounds great. This is a wonderful option. It will plug right into your phone, sound decent, and it'll cost you. So for just $20, we just went live with good quality video because, I mean, most modern phones have great quality video and with uh, good, good quality sound because we just put this microphone on there. If you want to get to the next level from there, I would say probably the Ceramonic Smart Mic right here. This is a great option. And the reason that I would go here next um, is the lavalier is great for just yourself. But if you want to record yourself and anyone else, a microphone like this one where you can plug it into your phone and then swing it to one side and swing it back is a little bit easier to aim. So that makes it better for those kind of things. It's also nice because you can be holding the phone out away from yourself uh, and not worry about the cable tangling up on anything as you walk. So that's pretty nice. And if you want to get to the next level with your mobile stuff, then you're looking at the Rode Video Micro right here. This guy for $55 
is it comes with a little shock mount. You can mount it to a camera, or they have a version of this that attaches to a smartphone. Let me see what that one is specifically called. The video mic me. See, it's the same microphone, the same shape, but it mounts to your smartphone. And these things sound incredible. They're really high quality. So you can, I mean, you can look up any product video on YouTube of what they sound like. And there's a bunch of people who just take them out of the box, plug them in and talk into it to give you an idea of what they sound like. So those are all great options. And those are some ways that you can really take yourself to the next level. Let me check again. Do any of you have any questions or do you have a specific use case that I haven't addressed yet? It doesn't look like it. Looks like we're all, we're all still chilling. We're all still feeling good. So I wouldn't worry too much about the questions at the moment. But if you do have them, you're always welcome to leave questions in the comments. And I do come back and check even the past videos. I go back and check those pretty regularly. So if there are questions that I can answer, please feel free to ask them. I would love to get to you know your specific use case and dive in and find a way to resource you. So what happens next? I have now covered basically all the details of buying yourself some live stream equipment. Each day this week, we've gone really in depth into what all the pieces do and why we need them and how to choose the right one for you and what all your options are. What comes next? The next thing you do is you start live streaming first, do it, get, you know, get used to the idea of how it feels, um, be open to making mistakes so that you have the freedom to actually make progress and then come back to it about two weeks down the line and look at what you've been doing and decide if it's working or not. Something that I really encourage is failing quickly when you need to fail or, or course correcting quickly. Don't do something for three months and then check if it worked if you can come to the same conclusion after a month. The idea there is you don't want to be subjecting people to the same low quality stuff uh, if you haven't figured out what your your best option will be moving forward from there. So tweak your options, track your data, figure out how to get the most out of it. And just like last time, I'll see you in the next one. Oh, the next one will be next week on Thursday. And I'll be talking about five things that I bought that I shouldn't have. We're going to start branching out from live streaming into the rest of video creation because there's a whole lot to this world and covering what exactly it means for me to tell you why you should buy something. We're going to figure out how I came to those conclusions and which things I bought that were totally waste of money so that you don't have to waste your money on the same equipment. Now, just like last time, I will see you next time. Have a great rest of your day, friends.